But let me show you that God looks at wicked a different way. Matthew 25. Pray for us, saints. Matthew 25, verse number 24. I'm blessed. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there. Thou hast that is thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. You knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Many people get saved, sit down, and that's it. They treat the message of sanctification like it's a maybe if I will, maybe if I won't. There's going to be a whole lot of justified saints in hell. You can't escape hell when you just get justified and God is telling you, get sanctified. Move on. Get rid of the carnal nature. Get your life right. Get that out of there. Get sanctified. Get sanctified. And all you doing is saying, no, I'm going to live like this. I'm going to do it like this. There's plenty of people in hell just like that. Man. This gospel, either it is what it is or it's not. Right, right, right. We can't sugarcoat it. Right. We can't mix it up. We can't divide it up and make some work and some not work. He said, you wicked and slothful servant. He was a servant. He had a talent. But he said, hey, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for my sins. And I'm going to leave it there. I don't drink no more. I don't smoke. I don't curse. I don't do that stuff no more. Yeah, but you don't pray either. Your prayer life is terrible. We already eight months into the year. Can you tell me when the first time or, or what's the day you fasted so far this year? You got a fast day in yet? Eight months into the year. You got one fast day in? How's your reading? How's your quiet time? How's your devotion? Can you tell me about one day you spent with God? Just that one day, just you and God? You got one day in eight months? Or do you need to go out to the field right now and dig that talent up? And take it to the exchangers and get something back for it? If you don't, you a wicked servant. That's what the Bible says. Wicked and slothful, lazy. People don't want to work for God nowadays. People don't want to really live for God nowadays. I just want to be saved. Just call me saved. And let me go about my business doing what I want to do. That's a wicked and slothful servant. Now what do you do with it? Take therefore, verse 28, the talent from him. And give it unto him with half ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's a movement in the world today that teaches man doesn't have a soul. And they also teach that there is no hell. That's true, brother. So the message that I'm preaching tonight would totally contradict what they teach and their doctrine. This would be a heresy to them. Hell doesn't exist to them. So I said, well, let me do a small study on hell. See the Jehovah Witness have a point. Or are they on their way? Hell in the Hebrew is Sheol, which is defined as the grave or the unseen state. So a lot of times in the Old Testament, when they mention hell, they was mentioning the grave. They're going to hell, they're going to the grave or the unseen state. In the Greek, you have Gehenna or Hades. 
Gehenna or Hades is defined as the abode of the dead, the place of punishment. So when I was looking into this and studying this and I seen those words, I realized that if they wanted to, they could stop there and then just leave hell in that box with those words. But the problem is when Jesus preached about hell, he had so many other definitions and descriptions of hell. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't just say, listen, you're going to the grave or you're going to the unseen state. But he said, you're going to order outer darkness. You're going to eternal torment. You're going to the lake of fire that burneth and burneth and shall not be quenched where the worm dieth not. Yeah. Okay, so take hell off the table. What is the lake of fire? What is eternal torment? What is outer darkness? Then he said, the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Friend, listen, the residents of hell are not in a six bedroom mansion. They're in outer darkness. They're in torment. They're in flames that won't stop burning. That will never, ever, ever, ever stop burning. It's eternal punishment. Who wants to jeopardize their life for an eternity of burning? Who wants to let some spot get on their garment in exchange for eternity of burning? Who really wants to be a resident of hell? God saved us from sin. God delivered us from sin. We ought to be doing everything within our power to get saved, sanctified, be fully encouraged, be at church when the door is open, be at prayer meeting when the door is open. Any chance we can read the Bible, read the Bible. Any chance we can witness, witness. Any time we can do something for God, we ought to be jumping for joy to do something for God. He's keeping you from going to hell. Do we understand the reality of what this is? We're heaven bound, saints. We're heaven bound. We should be rejoicing. We should be happy. The Bible talks about the man that went to hell. The brother talked about it last night. He said, can I just get one drop? Can I get one drop to cool my tongue? And Lazarus was over in uh, uh, Abraham's bosom in paradise. The place that God created for his people. The heavenly home. The mansion. The one that's going to be worth it all. No matter what we have to go through. No matter what we have to deal with. No matter how hard it is. No matter how tough it is. No matter if it knocks the water out your eye. No matter if you got to apologize ten times. Dear friend, whatever you got to do, it beats the flames. Amen. It beats the flames. A million fold. We don't want to play with our salvation, saints. This is the most important thing we have in this world. We don't want to put our jobs in front of it. We don't want to put businesses in front of it. We don't want to put family in front of it. We don't want to put friends in front of it. Before anything in your life, it should be salvation first and everything else secondary. Jesus said, fear not man who can kill the body. But you got to fear God who can only not only kill the body, but cast the soul into hell. We got to fear God and keep his commandments. Every single one of them, even the smallest one. Amen. I remember when the old time saints used to hear messages across the pulpit. Even if it got a little bit close to them, they stuck away from that thing like a 10 foot pole. You preach on hills today and they're trying to figure out, well, how high are you talking about we heal? The old sister kicked their shoes off. I walk in my bare feet then. You talk about bringing your neckline up, they put on turtlenecks. Nowadays they come out and they just graze right down just enough. You talk about don't cut in your hair, they want to know. Well, do you mean the edges? Do you mean lining up? What do you really mean by cutting your hair? 
We got to get all the way down to the specific. But the old time saints, they realize, I don't want to go to hell. I don't have to touch my hair. I wear my skirt till I walk on my skirt. I don't have to wear heels. I don't have to have no attitude. I don't have to behave myself unwisely. Whatever God wants me to do, if it's going to help me not go to hell, I'm willing to do it a million times. True Bible salvation. We got to have it in this last time. Yeah. We got to have it in this last day. If we're looking for the glory, if we're looking for the glory to fall, if we're looking for the gifts, if we're looking for the power, God doesn't leave gifts in the air. He don't leave them just laying around and as you run and you jump, you can pull something out the air. He said, I put gifts in men. I give gifts to men. He don't give gifts to men who's not ready, who's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, who's not qualified, shabby prayer life. Don't read your Bible. Work, 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 work. No fast day. What do you do that shows God that you really want to be used by God? He's saying you slothful. You're not working hard enough for me. Or oh, you'll work overtime and triple time for your job. But when it comes to working for the kingdom, you put in a couple hours and you're out of here. You leaving already? Already? Where are you going? We just got started. I got something to do. I just got married. I got some land. I got the dead I got to bury. God is serious about his church just as serious he is about the wicked man in the world. We can't get by either. We can't get by. We can't pop our collars and say, hey, I'm here. I'm safe. We can't do it. So you say, Brother Sam, with all that disturbing and, and terrible news about hell, can we hear something to encourage you? <laughs> you can. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. That's not a cliche. God's not here to kick you, step on you, push you down. He said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yeah. If there's a need in your life, just get the help. Does that sound hard? That's not that hard. If there's a need in your life, get the help. If there's an apology you have to make, make the apology. Yes. If there's something you got to stop doing, quit doing, work on doing, stop, quit, work on it. You don't want a friend get past the point where God says, okay, I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to let you walk, sleep. I'm going to go ahead and let you sleepwalk. I'm not going to try to wake you up anymore. I'm going to go ahead and let you carry on, go through your routine, but you sleep. We don't want to get there. Matthew 25th, I'm sorry, Luke 13. We'll use these scriptures as our last scripture, saints, to let you go. Let you go. The hour is late. Thank you for your kind attentions and patience. Luke 13, verse number 23. Then said one of him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. They had a question. The same way David had a question. And they said unto him, Lord, are there a few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive. That's what it's all about, saints. Strive. Amen. We can be the remnant. We can be the few. All we have to do is strive. We don't have to give up. We don't have to give in. We don't have to throw the towel in and say it's too hard. It's too rough. The Bible says strive. Work at it. Keep working at it. If your prayer life isn't what it should be, pray about it. If you need to fast some more, pray about it. If you need to do better with your neighbor, do better. If you need a second work of grace, get the second work of grace. Get that carnality burned out. Get that sanctified experience. Get the Holy Spirit. Get the one true spirit. The one that wants to unite his people. Get it because it's free and God requires you and God wants you to have it. 
if you strive, if you keep focused, if you have a desire down in your heart, a burning love desire to do this thing, to live this way, to walk this walk, dear friend, God will help you. God will guide you. God will strengthen you. God is not going to leave you. He said, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. He said, I'll always be there to help you. God will carry you if you can't walk. He'll put you on your his shoulder if you get down. God will heal your broken heart. God will type into the real small issue that might be bothering you. God will help your emotion. God will help your pride. God will help you with whatever you need help with. Friend, God is here to help you with it. He doesn't want any of us to leave here unprepared to meet it. Not at all. He says strive. You strive, you strive, you strive, you strive. And if you strive, you can enter in yes. the straight and the narrow. Yes. You can go in there. Yes. Then it says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know ye not when ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our street. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not when ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. We want to be in that number, saints. We want to strive to enter in. We don't want to take up residency in that place called hell. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? If you got some needs tonight, if you need to settle some things at the altar tonight, we invite you to come down for prayer. We invite you to get the help you need. We feel like the Holy Ghost was here this weekend. We feel like he's moving, he's troubling the water, he wants to help his people. And judgment's not far away, saints. This doesn't smell good to him. God is ready to bring judgment, but mercy is here. And mercy is asking tonight for you to come and get the help that you need. Shall we stand? anyone wants prayer tonight, the altar is open. Is there a song? The altar is open. If there's anyone that wants prayer, I would say to make your calling and election sure. You don't want to get to the judgment wondering, guessing, hoping, wishing, thinking, maybe I'm going to get in, maybe I'm not. Hell is not a good place for you. What's our number? Is anyone else who needs prayer? We thank the Lord for his mercy. We thank the Lord for his love. We thank the Lord for his...